Bonjour Genie Engineers, welcome to my problem a day series. In this video, we're going to do problem on statics. We're going to calculate the force that is required for a block to stay in equilibrium. Now, if you're here for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we're giving this System and we need to calculate the force that we need to apply so that the block stays in equilibrium. It does not move. Now, before we start, I would like to say a couple things. So, I got a very similar question on my FE exam, so make sure you understand this problem. It's very easy, straightforward once we draw the forces in the free body diagram. Another thing that I would like you to keep in mind is sometimes you will be given this problem, but it won't be in equilibrium. The block would be moving, and in that case, you will have dynamics. So your equilibrium equations, the summation of the forces of x and y equals to zero, does not no longer apply to those problems. So in that case, you're going to use Newton's second law, which is the summation of the forces equals to ma. And so I'll make sure to cover a problem like that in the future, but I just want you to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's first start with uh, drawing our forces and then draw the free body diagram and then from after that we're going to set up our equilibrium equations and then we're going to start solving. Okay guys, so let's identify the force. So we have three forces that we need to keep in mind. We have the weight, we have the normal force and we have the friction force. So the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So I have an inclined surface, so my normal force is going to be perpendicular. So it's going to be this way. So let me draw it. So we have this is my normal force. Now for the weight, uh, it's going to be pulling down and it's always straight because that's the gravity. That's how gravity works. So we have the weight, which equals to mg, which we can dis we're going to uh, discuss later. Now the friction force is going to actually act this way because your friction force is always opposing motion. So if you have force, you're applying force this way, you're going to have friction force going this way. So I think we identified all our forces. So let's draw the free body diagram using all these forces that we just talked about. So this is my y, this is my x axis. Uh, this is, let's draw the forces in a different color. Let's do red. So here I have mg going down or the weight. Um, another thing is here I have 40 degrees, right? So this is going to be 40, that's 40. Now, if this is 40, this can be 40 because you always, if you have a triangle this way, right? You have 90 here, this is 40. If that's 40, then this cannot be 40 because that won't sum up uh, your 180. So this, the summation of these angles, it has to be 180. So what you can do, you can either do 180 minus 90 minus 40, and then determine this angle, or you could just use this as 40, because if this is 40, this is 40. So that way you do less calculations and you go faster. Now we said that the friction force is going to go this way. Now my force that I'm trying to calculate for is going this way, and this is our normal force going up. Okay, so note guys that the coordinate, the way I draw it, this is what positive looks like, and this is what positive it's going to be. So that's just the way I set it. If you want to set it the other way, you will still get the same answer. Just make sure you stick to the same signs and you just don't change them in the middle of the problem. Another thing I would like to do is break the mg into two components. So we have the x and the y. So let's call this is y and this is going to be x, correct? So I'm going to actually draw it here so that you guys have uh, kind of visualize it better. So we said that this is 40, right? And this is my force right here. That's your mg. But it's going to have two components. It's going to have the y and the x. It, this is very same as this. It's just that one inclined. So if I want to use the y, we need to use cosine, right? Because it, we always use the adjacent. Now, for the opposite, we usually use sine, right? So I have y is equal to mg cosine 40. And then here I'm going to have mg sine 40. Because remember, if you guys remember this from trigonometry, we have sine theta is equal to what? Opposite over hypotenuse. 
and then cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's what we pretty much did here. So I have y is equal to mg cosine 40 because it's the adjacent. For the opposite, we use sine. These are those two components. So our free body diagram is ready. Now all we need to do is just start using equilibrium equation. So we have the summation of the forces on the y is equal to zero. So I have n, but I have minus mg because mg is going negative. It's going down this way. So I have minus mg and it's going to be cosine 40 because that's the y. And this is equals to zero. So now I have n is equal to mg cosine 40. So let's not calculate this yet because we don't really care about uh, calculating this. We still want to find f, right? So let's do summation of the forces on the x equals to zero. Now this way is my positive direction for x. So what do we have? I have f, which is positive. Then I have minus the friction force because it's going the opposite direction of our sign. So it's not minus. And then same thing here for the mg sine theta, it's going to be negative because it's going the opposite direction. So I have minus mg sine 40 is equal to zero. So as you guys know, the friction force is equal to my friction factor times the normal force. Let me write it down so you guys know what I just said. So I have mu times my normal force. Now we calculated the normal force as mg cosine 40. So now I can just go and replace it. So I have mu times mg cosine 40. Now all the variables in these equations we already know. So we can easily solve for f. So let's do f is equal to, let's take everything to the other side. So I have the friction force is equal to mu times mg cosine 40 plus mg sine 40. Now for easier calculations and also to save time during your exam, you could always factor mg and then you'll have mu cosine 40 plus sine 40. And now you can just plug in everything. So I have m is equal to 4 kilograms, g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, mu was 0 0.25, then I have cosine 40 plus sine 40. So if you plug in this, you will get 32.74 newtons. So it has to be newtons because here you have kilograms times meter per second squared, and that's the units for newtons which is good because that's also the unit for force. Okay, guys, so on the next video, we're going to do problem on equilibrium. So make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when I release the video. And if you have any questions, please leave in the comments below and I will make sure to address it in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. A la prochaine.